Hello everyone, welcome to Good Shepherd, welcome back to all who have been worshiping with us. We're excited that this week we're, besides our online worship, that we're also going to start up in-person worship with two services, 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock, and we're also going to have people worshiping from our parking lot through their car radio. So it's an exciting time. God is still at work, and on this day of Pentecost that we celebrate today, we celebrate that the Holy Spirit is still work, working among us. We begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in Christ, God sends His Holy Spirit to work true, true contrition and sorrow over our sins, and to bless us with the gift of repentant faith for our forgiveness. In this truth, we make our confession together. Come, Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. By the power of your word, we confess our sin and need of your grace. We confess that we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, and in our actions, both in what we have done and in what we have failed to do. For the sake of the mighty work of our Lord Jesus, his death and resurrection for us and the whole world, grant to us your forgiveness and new life. Jesus says in his conversation with Nicodemus in John chapter 3, The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading comes from Numbers chapter 11, verses 24 through 30. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered seventy men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him, and they and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on him, they prophesied, but they did not continue doing it. Now the two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Odad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would, would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them? And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as, as a fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is that that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians, and Medes, and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belong to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocked, said, saying, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. 
But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs in the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the seventh chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he had said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Here we are, a month and a half removed from Easter Sunday. A couple of days before Easter, before that glorious day of Jesus' resurrection from the dead, was Good Friday. On Good Friday, we saw Jesus hanging and suffering on a cross. The Apostle John writes, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus' mission to save sinful humanity was now finished. His mission to fulfill his Father's will of living a perfect life of obedience and taking the punishment for all of our sins was now finished. His mission to seek and to save the lost was finished as he took his dying breath. And after he bowed his head, he gave up his spirit, and they took his lifeless body and placed it in a tomb. Things didn't look so good in that dark hour. His disciples were afraid. They voluntarily sheltered in place, afraid to go out. They even had the doors locked. Maybe even the blinds were closed as well. Things didn't look so good. Imagine if that was the end of the story. Of course, we know it wasn't. But things changed on that glorious Easter morning. Jesus was alive. Jesus was risen. And then Jesus appears to his scared disciples. He shows them the nail marks in his hands and his feet. And as we heard last week, Jesus tells them, And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. That promise from Jesus would be fulfilled when they stayed in the city, when they stayed in Jerusalem, and received the gift of the Holy Spirit which we celebrate today on Pentecost Sunday. Have you ever felt like something was just impossible? Like, why bother even trying? Because the odds were so stacked against you. I used to enjoy the old Mission Impossible TV show when I was a kid. Every week, it would start with some situation, seemingly impossible, and that the world that we know of was going to end unless Mr. Phelps, Peter Graves, and his team agreed to accept the mission, and then this tape self-destructs in five seconds. Every week, Mr. Phelps and his team accept the mission, and after lots of drama and uncertainty, things fall into place, and in the end, they have a successful mission. Imagine if Jesus fulfilled his Father's mission and no one told anyone about it. Imagine if Jesus died for our sins, that he rose from the dead, that he ascended into heaven, and no one else knew about it. As we've talked about, 
Jesus gave his followers a mission. We call it also the Great Commission. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. That doesn't sound to me like a very easy task, to go to all nations, to tell everyone. Sounds like a not-so-possible mission. But think about that day of Pentecost. It wouldn't be easy to spread the gospel to all nations, to all people everywhere. So God the Father, through the working of His Holy Spirit, brought the nations to the followers of Jesus that day. People from all over were in Jerusalem to celebrate the religious festival called the Feast of Weeks. It was a time to thank and praise God for the ingathering of the wheat harvest. Take a look at the map of the nations mentioned in our Pentecost reading from Acts chapter 2. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to, the, to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. So God, in His own amazing way, He creates this loud sound like a, a mighty rushing wind, we're told, and it fills the entire house where Jesus' followers were. The Holy Spirit was given, appearing as, as if tongues of divided tongues of fire that rested upon not only that, but this loud sound, this mighty rushing wind, it creates attention uh, for the people who are outside the house, and so they gather close by. And Jesus' disciples who are now filled with the Holy Spirit, these men from Galilee, the Galileans, they now are able to proclaim the mighty works of God to people in their different languages. So the followers of Jesus could speak in languages they didn't know before this. And the Holy Spirit leads them to proclaim this good news to those who are in Jerusalem from all around. Jesus had said prior to this, right before his ascension into heaven, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the Take a look at this other man. The Spirit-filled followers proclaim the good news of Jesus, starting in Jerusalem, it's the innermost circle on the map. And this good news would radiate outward to Judea, the next larger circle, then to Samaria going out further, and then further and further to the end of the earth. Not exactly to infinity and beyond, but to Rome and beyond which eventually came all the way across the ocean to us today. Seemingly impossible. Think again how this started. A bunch of scared people were in a locked room without hope. Their leader, their savior, was dead. But then they would see him alive. He gives them the gift of His Holy Spirit. And if we go back one chapter at the beginning of the book of Acts, it says that in verse 15 that there were about 120 followers of Jesus at that time. Now there are some 2.3 billion followers of Jesus today. Quite a big difference. And that 2.3 billion Christians, that doesn't count all the people who over the, the centuries 
are now worshiping with their Savior in heaven. So how did this happen? Well, first of all, it is all God's doing. It's the work of the Holy Spirit who gives you and me the gift of language so that we can communicate the good news of Jesus to those in our lives who speak the same language as us. We're blessed that we've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit so that we can proclaim to others this good news. We're not asked to speak in different languages we don't know, but we've been given a message to proclaim the mighty works of God to those around us, to all the people God puts in our lives, just as the followers of Jesus did on that day of Pentecost long ago. Think about today. The COVID-19 virus started in China, and it went out further and further and further, reaching, affecting, and infecting people all around the globe. Churches closed, businesses closed, schools closed, people were told to stay in their homes, many of them fearful. But even so, God's word continued to go out and out, reaching people through this time of hardship, through technology, through the internet. And now today, we're even starting out through the radio waves to the people in our parking lot. God's work never stopped. It just took a different path. God got the world's attention, and His word, the good news of Jesus, was able to spread and spread and spread to all nations. Even when things looked rather impossible, the Holy Spirit was still doing His thing, doing His work, connecting people to Jesus. The mission may have looked impossible, but as Jesus once said, with God, all things are possible. I read an article from Christianity Today. It was because of the coronavirus that a woman by the name of Grace, who lives in the Philippines, she was out looking on the internet because she was very anxious about all that was going on. She found the Christian website, became connected with a counselor from that site, and the counselor shared Jesus with her and the peace that he came to bring. Many people, like Grace, are searching for answers. And because of this pandemic, the number of internet searches that are related to prayer were up dramatically in 75 different countries. So people are searching. One 17-year-old girl shared, I'm not a religious person, but I don't know who else to turn to but God. Reminds us of the words of the psalmist in Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. People worldwide are searching for answers. Jesus' death and resurrection was his Father's answer to the evil of this world. Jesus is the answer to sin and to death and dying. That same psalm also says, The Lord watches over you. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. The Holy Spirit continues to do His work of pointing people to Jesus, for giving them hope when circumstances seem hopeless, and for comforting them and us in our time of need. The Holy Spirit gathers people from all around the world and brings them to faith in Jesus. This isn't something that we do on our own, but the Holy Spirit works on our hearts. He guides us to see that we need help, he guides us to see that we've fallen short of God's good plan for us. And then He leads us to confess our sins and comforts us with the good news that we are loved and forgiven through the work that Jesus did for us on that cross. Jesus in our Gospel reading says, Whoever believes in me, as the Scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, 
whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Jesus speaks of the time when his Holy Spirit will fill the hearts of believers with bountiful spiritual blessings, beginning with the outpouring of the Spirit on that day of Pentecost, and continuing through you and me and those who will believe through the good news that we share with them. A lot of people are seeking help. Really, they're thirsting for Jesus. Jesus talked about rivers of living water. I have another slide that I'm about to show that shows a river and a bridge. And when you take a look, see if you notice anything unusual about it. This bridge is a Choloteca bridge in Honduras, the country where my son-in-law Dennis is from. Did you notice anything unusual about it? Yeah, the bridge doesn't span the river. At one time it did, but back in 1998, Hurricane Mitch hit that country, and the roads that led to the bridge were wiped out, and with all the flooding from the hurricane, the Choloteca River carved a new channel, so that when the waters finally receded, the river no longer flowed under that bridge. The hurricane changed many people's lives. And in the aftermath, that's become the new normal for them. We don't know what the new normal is going to be with this pandemic. Will we be wearing face masks for a long time? Will we be worshiping from home more than we worship in person? When restaurants finally open, will the tables be spread apart? And for how long? We just don't know. Whatever the case may be, rest assured that the Holy Spirit will still be at work, drawing people to Jesus. He's the one who never changes. Even though the world around us may be changing, the Holy Spirit keeps working and working to connect people to Jesus as His good news is shared. And He uses you and me and all Christians everywhere to share that good news. He's the one who connects people to Jesus through you and me as we share Jesus and his unchanging love for his people. The Choloteca Bridge is a reminder that our world is continually changing. And this pandemic continues to remind us that our world and our lives have been changing too. So we adapt. We change. Think about how we as a church have been adapting to this changing world. We have online worship, which we never had before. Bulletins and sermons are being sent out through the postal service. We're working, getting the radio signal, so today we're offering that in our parking lot so people can worship with their cars along with us worshiping inside. We have many different ways of sharing the unchangeable truth that we have in Jesus. The Holy Spirit continues to be on a mission to connect people to Jesus, to call, to gather, to enlighten, and to sanctify the whole church on earth. Whether the church, God's people, are worshiping here, or in their homes, or out in the parking lot, the Holy Spirit's mission includes the forgiveness of sins, and His mission involves you and it involves me. In every episode of Mission Impossible, Mr. Phelps is presented with a mission. And he's given a choice whether he wants to accept it or not. And then the tape, tape self-destructs. We've been given a mission. And we're empowered by the Holy Spirit to share this good news that we have to those who don't yet believe. The people that God puts in our lives before they self-destruct. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. That's why our mission is so important. Amen. Amen. We thank you for continuing your support of the Holy Spirit's mission here at Good Shepherd through your tithes and your offerings. We continue with prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we offer before you our prayer for the well-being
holy of your church throughout the world, so guard and govern it by your Holy Spirit, that all your people be led in the way of truth and boldly proclaim the hope that is in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Send down upon all ministers of the gospel and upon the congregations committed to their care the spirit of your grace, that they please you in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Behold in mercy all who are in authority over us. Supply them with your blessing, that they be inclined to your will and walk according to your commandments. Give wisdom to the leaders so they make decisions concerning this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We humbly ask your abiding presence in every situation, that you would make known your ways among us. Protect us from the COVID-19 virus. Be with all who are sick, with those who are covering, and with all who mourn. Guide us by your Spirit to trust in you for all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We are now bold to pray as our good shepherd has taught us. Our Father, Father, who art Lord in heaven, heaven, hallowed Lord, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace as you serve our risen Lord.